Hello and welcome to Computer Craft. Uh, this is a, a part of the Technic Pack. It's the I think it's called the Computer Craft a mod. And what it does is it allows you to add computers, and modems, and disk drives to your Minecraft world. So as you can see right here, there's a little computer terminal next to this iron door. And inside you can see some more computer terminals. And uh, I thought I'd go ahead and show this off. I, I really, I really like this mod. Uh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to add computers. It allows you to program things, to make logic, to uh, control little mining turtles. And so today, what I wanted to show is how you can use these little computer terminals to uh, password protect your doors. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And sometimes this door glitches. Nope, worked out just right this time. So there you go. You see the little modem on back. And if you type in the wrong password, of course, you can't get through the door. So it's a really nifty way of adding a password to, if you have a, a place that you want to maybe add passwords to let some, some of your, I don't know, clan mates get in and then keep out others, uh, you can go ahead and add one of these pretty simply, actually, to any iron door or any redstone. So, let's go ahead and go in and, and maybe look to see how it works. Um, we'll go uh, maybe over some simple explanations first, and then uh, maybe I'll show the actual uh, setup that we're using on these two doors. So notice this one, the password's different. Minecraft no longer gets me into this door. So, I'll give you a really basic idea of how this works. Uh, so here we have a uh, computer. Uh, don't need the disk drive, but we have a disk drive. Uh, to the right of the computer, we see some redstone leading to a redstone light. And in the back, we see some more redstone leading to another redstone light. Now, the idea behind these locks is uh, actually really, really simple. And it's, it's easy to use, so I think anyone could probably do this. So all you do is you go up to the computer and you right-click. And I'm going to go ahead and exit this. And you're going to see this little prompt here at first. And that just means that uh, it's waiting for some kind of command. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a new file that's going to keep track of your password or it's going to do whatever you want it to do. Uh, so the file that I used, and I'm going to do ls to list all the files, was simple lock on this one to give a really simple locking mechanism. So we're going to go ahead and look at that simple lock. And this might look uh, difficult, but there's only one screen. This is the whole screen here. And so I'm just going to go over really quick what it does. So this first line here, uh, normally when you're at a screen, you can hold down Control T. And it will terminate whatever you're doing. It'll just drop you right back to the prompt. But we don't want that. It's a lock, so they shouldn't be able to do that. So this uh, pull, this just this line. All you need to know is it it forces you or it keeps them from hitting Control T to get out of the screen. And then what we're gonna do is we have a variable called done, and we make up that name. You could call this anything. You could say local, uh, finished, local, uh, paralin, local, elf, whatever you want it to be. The name is of your choice. But uh, you have to put local because it's a local variable, and you're setting it to false initially. So this underneath here is the entire logic. So while done is false, and we see done is false here, we just do this over and over and over again until done becomes true. So what are we doing in this loop? This while, do, and this end is everything that we're doing over and over again. So the first thing we do here we write the word password. So, you know, if we want the password. So it's going to write that on the screen. And then we have another variable. Again, we could call it whatever we want, but this time we call it password. And it's a local variable. And we're going to fill that with something that we get from the user. So here's read. And these little brackets mean that it's a function. So it's going to read something from the keyboard and put whatever they type in into this variable called password. Now, that means that the password is going to be on the screen. So once they're done, we're going to want to clear the screen. 
And you don't really have to do this. What this does is it puts the cursor back in the upper left corner here. Now, I have a little thing that I've built in. It lets me break out. I don't know if you want to add this or not, but sometimes I want to break out of the lock and, and, and get back to the, to the command. So I have this little cheat in here. So this, uh, this little password allows me to pop right out of the password uh, protection. And uh, see done equals true. That means that this loop will finish. Done equals true. So this says while well, done equals false, keep doing this. So after this, uh, it'll drop us out of this whole program. So the lock will be gone. Uh, but you can ignore that for now. You don't even have to put that in. You can just go straight down here and change this else if to an if if you want. It's up to you. So then you say if the password is equal to cheese, then print access granted. And then you set the redstone output to the right to true. You sleep for five seconds and then you set the output, the redstone output of the right to false. So what it's going to do is if you type in cheese, it's going to turn on the right hand side for redstone, sleep for five seconds, and turn off the right hand redstone output. So really super simple. And um, I'll go ahead and show you that working. So I'm going to hit control, I'm going to hit save, and then control again, and I'm going to exit. And that file was called simple lock. So you just type in simple lock. And it's going to ask you for a password. And you can type in as many things as you want, but the two special words are cheddar and cheese. So if I type in cheese, it should put a pulse on the redstone to the right for five seconds and then put uh, uh, then in the pulse. So let's see if that works. I'm just going to look over here, hit escape. It's off. And then click back on it and I'm hit enter. And look, oh, there it is. It's, it's lit. It's beautiful. Now you could do anything. You could put a door here. You could put, uh, I don't know, TNT, whatever you want. Now, you could also do multiple things. So right now I have it turning on the right hand uh, redstone. But I could also have it uh, turn on both at the same time, or I could wait and have it turn on one than the other. So I'll, I'll show you an example of that. Uh, we're going to use cheddar, which is my cheat to break out so I can get back to the command prompt. And I'm going to do edit simple lock again. Oops, that's um, a different program. You don't have to worry about that program. That's for later. Now see right here what we're doing is we set the right hand side output to true, we sleep for five seconds, and then we set it to false. What we could do is as soon as we s turn this one off, we can sleep, I don't know, another two seconds, and then turn redstone set output back to true. And then we're going to turn it off after, uh, let's say, just one more second. Sleep one. Redstone. Set output. Back. False. So now it should turn on the right-hand side for a few seconds, five seconds. And then turn off. And then turn this one on for one second. So let's go ahead and see if that works. Simple lock. And cheese. All right, good. Turned on. And perfect. So you could you could maybe open up a door and then and then blow them up with the dynamite or, or whatever you'd like. So it's really versatile. It's really neat uh, what you can do. Now next time I'm going to show how you can actually control the passwords from a different location. Because if you remember, the password here was Minecraft, and it's granted, okay? But if I wanted to change that to, let's say I want to change it to Jeb. See, that doesn't work right now. Minecraft. I can go into my password server. Notch. And there's my server room. And here's a little display to show whether the invalid or valid attempts. And all I have to do is go into my server. And uh, I can change it from here. Uh, ch change the password for both of these doors with the modems on it. So I'm going to go ahead and show that next time, next time around. And uh, show you how you can have a password server 
in here. Uh, in fact, why don't I just sh show you really uh, briefly, I'll show you it working. So if you see this monitor here, it says uh, door 11 had a valid access. This is terminal 11. So if I typed in a bad password here, you should see an invalid 11 on this monitor. So let's go ahead and go in here and type in puppies, which should be a password. But notice an invalid password attempt on 11. And again, if I type in the correct password, voila, a valid. So it's something that's really neat. You can control your passwords. You can control the logins uh, from, a, from a remote server also. So I'll go ahead next time and show the, the code for that. I might show it in two parts because the code is a little bit longer. It talks over the red net network, but uh, it's really neat. So uh, next time we'll go over that. And uh, until then, uh, happy computing.